red coral rocks sit on the northeast coast of England. Do you know it? Here's what they look like from the sea. It's a treacherous area with rocks as big as houses. The tides are swift and deep cutting off the beach in moments. When Red Coral Lifeboat were called there to rescue a family of three, they needed the Cleveland Police helicopter to light the scene. This is what they found. It's a chilly night in early June at Huntcliffe, just south of Red Car. In the darkness, the Cleveland Police helicopter uses an infrared camera to search the base of the cliffs, looking for any sign of the family. Two lifeboats stand by. Then a bright object catches the eye of the camera operator. It's a man clambering over the large boulders. He's with two others, a woman and a child. They found them. This Polish family are tourists and were cut off by the tide after going for a walk. They have a mobile phone but didn't know any emergency numbers. They had to wait to get through to an English friend before the alarm could be raised. But it's been a long wait. They've been out for over six hours and are only dressed for a summer's day. They may have been seen, but they're far from being rescued yet. The only way in is from the sea, and this is a treacherous stretch of water. The police guide the lifeboat crew to the family, who are now moving down to the edge of the sea. When the tide's in, the water completely covers rocks the size of houses. They could do serious damage to the hull of a boat. That's why the RNLI have bought two. The larger Atlantic 75 class is used to convey casualties at speed, while the smaller D class is able to get in over the rocks. While the family try to keep themselves warm, the lifeboat volunteers move in. Two of them, Paul Calvert and Tony Wheater, have plunged into the sea in their dry suits. They carefully make their way over the hidden rocks. Paul's at the front. As well as being an RNLI volunteer, he's an ambulance technician and is keen to get to the family to check for any signs of hypothermia. He's met by a very thankful mum. The smaller lifeboat is brought in as close as possible. Paul and Tony put life jackets on the family. They're ready to get down to the waiting boat. To help, the police helicopter lights the area. One by one, they make their way. Once they're all in the boat, it's pushed out to clear water. They pull alongside the larger, faster rib. And the family are transferred, ready to be whisked to safety. This is Mark Reeves, who was piloting the smaller of the two uh, ribs that you can see attending there. Uh, difficult situation, that, because a uh, really difficult stretch of coastline to get your boats to the shore. Yeah, really difficult, the, the size of the rocks and the location and with the tide it's uh, such treacherous, that's why we do a, a lot of training in that area to make sure we can get there in uh, any situation that's called on. I have to ask you, what were they doing there? I mean, we said they're Polish family, but what were they doing stuck on the, the, on the rocks? As place? far as we're aware, they went for a walk underneath the cliffs, not aware of the tide or the oncoming conditions or anything. And they were a long time out there, which is why, I mean, how cold were they when you got to them? They were, they were shivering, which is the first signs of hypothermia. So obviously the, there'd been a lovely warm day, but as soon as night time approaches, it was uh, getting rather cold. Yeah, of course, and if you're dressed for a lovely warm day, you're not dressed for when it choke goes chilly no, at night. Exactly. Um, uh, have they been there a long time? Did you, did you find out from them why? Uh, I aren't quite sure why. I mean, why did they call 999 sooner? Well, uh, apparently they didn't know, so they called a friend at Darlington who then called the 999 Oh, I see. Especially if you come from Poland, you don't necessarily know that. No. I wouldn't know what to dial in Poland, would you? No, I wouldn't know. Well, there you go. So that's what, that's what, um, we saw two of your guys actually just jump out of the boat, and then... So at that stage, they're wading in complete darkness. Yes, uh, on uneven conditions as well. The rocks could be two foot, three foot. I say that's why we do a lot of training in and around the rocks uh, in conditions. Obviously, the police helicopter with the... Isn't there a danger that you would just drop down the hole that isn't there or, or walk into the, a boulder? The, or? There is possibilities of that. Uh, so, like I say, that's why we do the... Uh, with all the right gear. It's an amazing job you do, I have to say. And you're a former fisherman, aren't you, that's, um, that's moved into the lifeboats afterwards? Yes, yeah? I am, yeah. Uh, so, it, a good job? You, do you enjoy what you do? Yeah, I love what I do. It's, uh, I enjoy giving a little bit back. 
Do you know, do you know they're, they're, to be fair, they're, they're not the first ones to get stuck. There are 35 families in 10 years that got stuck on that particular... Looks like you're going to be busy for a while. Yeah, it looks like it. And you've got a few years left to go. And a lot of people not uh, pleased that you're around. Thank you very much for coming <laughs> in to chat you. to us.